Every great while in human history, some great thinker, some great luminary genius of ontology, births an idea that catapults the consciousness of man forward, tears down the old tottering dominant worldview of the times, and ushers in a new era of philosophical, artistic, and even spiritual expression. The scorching light of these revolutionary ideas is at first invariably met with ridicule and scorn, at best, and violent persecution, torture, and murder at worst. The Gnostic heresy comes to mind, the murder of Socrates, the persecution of Pythagoras, the original progenitor of the round earth theory, the condemnation of Galileo, and the crucifixion of Christ. All of these men suffered for ideas and convictions that would ultimately contribute profoundly to the evolution of human culture and consciousness, and would influence the history of mankind. Despite what the Flat Earth contingent would have you believe, Flat Earth is not one of those ideas. Flat Earth is dumb, really dumb, but worse, it is destructive. It is a manifestation of the degradation of our collective cognitive prowess. It is an indication that not only have our critical thinking and analytical skills deteriorated to a remarkable degree amongst an alarming subset of the population, even our ability to draw obvious conclusions from our own observations has become frighteningly inadequate. Hey, it's Illuminostic. As some of you guys might know, I was recently challenged to debate one of the local flat earthers. The debate turned out to be a setup. It was staged by a local fundamentalist right-wing Trump tard group, complete with a shill planted in the audience that accused me of trying to recruit him into a satanic secret society and all sorts of other completely evil craziness. Death threats were made against me and one of my supporters. And I really think that it's, it's time to raise awareness about what is really going on in this group. I think they're a lot more dangerous and insane. Most people see them as just misguided, uh, lost souls that are maybe looking for a place to fit in and belong to. But there's actually a much more sinister, dark, and dangerous side. I mean, my partner and I are seriously considering like fleeing from our for our lives because of the reputation that some of these people have for actually being violent and dangerous. There are some hilarious elements of the story. I mean, this guy's, the, my opponent's argument was among the dumbest things that I've ever heard in my entire life. These arguments were so horrendously outrageous, ludicrous, preposterous, and absurd that I, I literally could not believe that they were even being presented. It's like nothing that came out of his mouth went through his brain first. So hit the like button, share, subscribe. Please do support us on Patreon because I'm out there on the front line apparently literally risking my life in the name of trying to spread consciousness and eradicate ignorance and stupidity. So please do support us on Patreon. We, we, we really do appreciate it. So this all began when I was making some posts about the Flat Earth Movement because I'd heard about it and I looked into it and I couldn't believe how stupid it was. I was expecting to find some arguments that were persuasive and convincing that would explain why people were getting like dragged into this and sucked into it. And I looked at the biggest guys like Mark Sargent and some of the other ones and there was absolutely nothing of substance. And so I, I will admit I was pretty overtly insulting and posting, I didn't realize how many of these people were. I thought it was probably just a tiny little clique somewhere in the United States. I had no idea that it was as many as one in 10 people in the United States at this point. So one of the local right wing conspiracy tinfoil hat wearing guys challenged me to a debate. He said, I'll pay you a hundred dollars. And then someone else said, I'll match it because they thought I was this arrogant, pompous jackass that's going to get served a big steaming plate of humble pie by their flat earth champion. Um, so I agreed to do the debate and they seemed so convinced that this guy was going to make me look stupid. I actually got a little bit nervous and I looked on his Facebook page and everything was completely dumb. All of his arguments were, you know, things like why doesn't the atmosphere get sucked into space? I mean, for those of you that don't know, it's because vacuums don't suck. Space is not a vacuum cleaner. Okay, and so I'm not saying that you're dumb if you don't know that the vacuum of space doesn't suck, but if you're going to take up a cause that is like a major, even pastime, much less something that you're basing sort of a religious belief on, you would think you would investigate these claims at least a little bit before you posted them on Facebook. And then there were a bunch of other ludicrous ones like that planes don't take uh, a curvature into account, they absolutely do using atmospheric pressure, uh, and on and on. Just the typical flat earth moronic mind fucking muddles of bullshit basically and so i studied hard because i'm not a scientist and i actually have very little formal education at all i'm entirely self-educated uh, i dropped out of school for all intents and purposes basically in elementary school 
and so I don't really have much of a formal background. I have studied a lot of physics and psychology. I mean, I consider myself very articulate, and I'm definitely very self-educated, but there are also massive holes in my education because I've always chosen what I was going to study. And so I started researching astrophysics, thermodynamics, everything I could to make sure that just in case this guy pulled some surprise, amazing, cogent argument out of his flat ass, I wanted to be prepared. And also when it came time for the rebuttals, I didn't want to get caught with my pants down and just be reciting a bunch of scientific stuff that I didn't actually understand. So I did take the time to actually make sure that I understood what I was talking about, how these things worked, why they worked. And what I discovered is that, you know, for example, the formation of the Earth into a sphere, it actually makes logical sense in a way that is cogent with our perceptions of other systems, like a drop of water. This stuff isn't really, like, outrageous or hard to understand, and it's actually pretty... Uh, compelling um, just based on the fact that it expresses consistency with a lot of other phenomena. Things started to get weird almost immediately when I showed up at the debate. One of my friends, a, a great supporter of mine, told me, you should just go. This is a setup. And I thought, I don't really see how it would be a setup. I, I, I didn't really worry about it. And they were paying me and I had done so much work, I wasn't about to just turn around and walk away. So it very quickly became obvious that this was a lot of fundamentalist Christian flat earthers. That very few people had come to be convinced that the earth is a globe, because who really needs that at this point? I am not making this up either. One of his arguments was that the Coriolis effect, which is the name given to the effect that a rotating body, uh, it's a law of physics, that uh, describes storms turning one way in the north and the other way in the in the southern hemisphere and so he said that because of the Coriolis effect which I think he thought meant the rotation of the earth the planes couldn't land because the the runway would be spinning around at a thousand miles an hour and there's no way they could hit a target like that it was completely insane when I asked uh, how it is that half of the flat earth is illuminated perfectly he showed a model, on, brought up a model on his laptop that showed a uh, sun here, moon here, always turning perfectly adjacent to each other, and less than, way less than one half of the plane was lit up. Just completely incredible stuff. And he, he made outrageous claims that a photograph that appears to show no curvature, that he actually took it himself from outer space, no one in the audience seemed to notice that this guy just made a claim that was so patently, outrageously, evidently false, that there was no way it wasn't a lie. No one seemed to notice but those of us who were not flat earthers. Another picture that he showed was a boat going towards the horizon on the ocean, and he says, watch, it just disappears, and he had clearly just edited it out, like the boat suddenly just vanishes, and it actually started to fast forward. To the, the video sped up dramatically as it approached the horizon, so you couldn't really tell, it just turned into a blur and then the boat was gone. And, you know, I pointed out, like, that has absolutely nothing to do with anything. All sorts of outrageous claims, and then he, was, he would insult me, he would say that I couldn't think for myself, but if I said the Flat Earth Movement was dumb, the moderator would object, and they would chastise me in front of the audience, and then both the organizer and the opponent would continue to insult me. While all this is going on, while I'm giving my arguments, there's another flat earther who is supposedly an ex-Navy SEAL and is, has a reputation for having severely beaten several people in this community, including his girlfriend and an old man recently, was walking by and whispering threats. And I didn't really notice that there were threats at first. He picked up on that and he started leaning really close. So once I realized he was threatening me and actually getting into my space about the fifth or sixth time, I actually told him, you know, if you do this again, I'm going to hit you. Because he had me in a position where I was underneath of him and very much vulnerable so I, I had to make some kind of gesture of self-defense because it was starting to actually scare me at this time I didn't know that he was this guy with this reputation for violence um, but it was it was pretty disconcerting so then the truth comes out and the flat earth opponent starts saying you know the reason that we need to put the earth back in the center of the universe where it belongs is because this guy and the other Satanists like him are trying to take God out of the picture. And then it all became crystal clear. I had been lured by a Christian fundamentalist group into this sort of like hostile nest of flat earth, 
fundamentalist Christians, and they actually had all talked about me beforehand. Everyone in the audience was convinced that I was a Satanist, and they were proving the satanic deception of globe earth by making me out to be a sa Satanist because, you know, in reality, the earth is flat because Jesus. The craziest part of this shit is that nowhere in the Bible does it say that the earth is at the center of the universe. This was the church's declaration. It's, it's not even in the Bible. So they feel like they're like reinstating Christian fundamentalism by putting the earth back in the center of the universe and undoing however many thousands of years of science. They actually don't need to do this in order to establish that there's a God. In fact, after he said this, I interjected and said, I'm actually not an atheist. Uh, <laughs> it's not that I believe in the same God that you do or that I believe in God in the traditional sense, but I actually don't really believe that nature is blind. I think there's at least some uh, guiding principle or some sort of consciousness that imbues everything. I mean, I experience this all the, all the time. I feel like I've caught evidence of it in, in some of my videos with these absurdly improbable synchronicities. The easiest way to say it is that I think that consciousness is the organizing principle. And without consciousness, there would be nothing but chaos, which is an opinion shared by a lot of physicists throughout the modern era. So this was towards the end of the debate and it was time for Q&A. So the organizer who had made comments about wanting to see me humbled many, many times, attacked me on Facebook, he says really loudly, oh boy, the part we've all been waiting for, the Q&A. And so 20 or 30 hands go up. There's kind of a lot of people there. And there are people in front of the guy that they hand the microphone who is an old sort of enemy of mine. At one point we were very, very close. He was the keyboard player in my band. He betrayed me absolutely horribly. I, I never did anything to harm him. I didn't beat him up after the fact. And, it, you know, I don't want to get into the personal issues. But trust me, most people would have done something, I think. You know, it, turning the other cheek was not easy in this situation. And I had really tried to help him and lift him up and encourage him. And so the moderator hands the microphone directly to this guy past all these other raised hands clearly planned he's got like a three-page note in his hand and he starts reading from it claiming that i had promised him gold and riches and fame and fortune and a job as the keyboard player in the grateful dead even though they haven't even existed for 30 years i never would have said that even if i was going to make something up to offer him something it would at least be something that could possibly be real okay so uh, he says I had promised him all this if he would just perform these black magic rituals and join my satanic secret society. And bearing in mind that the closing arguments from my opponent were exactly that science is a satanic deception and that I am basically there as an agent of Satan. I don't think I mentioned that actually people had started making comments in the audience that I was Lucifer and my opponent actually said, oh, that's just conjecture. The moderator's not stopping them at any point. So as soon as I start to make a rebuttal, microphone's gone, lights are out, no chance to respond. So as I'm packing up and getting ready to leave, my opponent leans over to me and he says, by the way, if you continue talking about flat earthers the way you do on Facebook, I'm not going to remain calm anymore. I go over and find my entourage, one of whom is uh, someone who watches the YouTube channel and had come down from California and was there that night. So that could have been embarrassing. I, I think he understood what had happened and, you know, it really wasn't. And I find out that this ex-Navy SEAL had actually threatened to kill one of my supporters for supporting me. So I'm partly trying to convey to you that you really do need to be careful with these people because they're not just misguided, harmless, lost souls. Apparently a lot of them are very dangerous. And since this has all happened and I've posted it online, I've gotten multiple messages from people saying, you know, I would have spoken out publicly, but I'm too terrified of this group to actually do anything. Part of this is a warning, but I also was very proud of the work that I did. And because they accused me of being like, you know, really insulting and also because I, I really like this writing, I just want to share with you guys the intro and the closing arguments, and I'm actually actually going to post this as a blog as well, so if you'd like to read the whole thing, you can. I would like to thank everyone for coming, despite my opponent's threat to flatten your brains, which I of course have no doubt that he will make good on, if not in the manner that he had in mind, or whatever it is that fills that hollow space between his ears. 
Every great while in human history, some great thinker, some great luminary genius of ontology, births an idea that catapults the consciousness of man forward, tears down the old tottering dominant worldview of the times, and ushers in a new era of philosophical, artistic, and even spiritual expression. The scorching light of these revolutionary ideas is at first invariably met with ridicule and scorn, at best, and violent persecution, torture, and murder at worst. The Gnostic heresy comes to mind, the murder of Socrates, the persecution of Pythagoras, the original progenitor of the round earth theory, the condemnation of Galileo, and the crucifixion of Christ. All of these men suffered for ideas and convictions that would ultimately contribute profoundly to the evolution of human culture and consciousness, and would influence the history of mankind. Despite what the Flat Earth contingent would have you believe, Flat Earth is not one of those ideas. Flat Earth is dumb, really dumb, but worse, it is destructive. It is a manifestation of the degradation of our collective cognitive prowess. It is an indication that not only have our critical thinking and analytical skills deteriorated to a remarkable degree amongst an alarming subset of the population, even our ability to draw obvious conclusions from our own observations has become frighteningly inadequate. Megalomania and other expressions of unhinged ego, cognitive bias, and cognitive dissonance are ubiquitous throughout the Flat Earth contingency. These are people that routinely complain that they are ridiculed for thinking differently, and often in the same breath, they will call those that don't think like them globetards. When I first heard of this movement, I investigated with an open mind. Instead of well-conceived, thoroughly investigated, evidence-based theories, I found only lunatic logic, complete and total ignorance of science, megalomania, religious fanaticism, unbridled arrogance, and sheer mind-numbing stupidity. The Flat Earth Movement is the bastard child of Galen Kruger and cognitive bias. This group that likes to think of themselves as great avatars of free thought are nearly always parroting word for word things that they have heard in Flat Earth videos without any consideration taken for critical thinking or common sense. This debate can't be won by my opponent because he is wrong without question. You cannot prove that which is patently false. I could establish this beyond doubt with a few sentences, but since you have bought tickets and are looking to be entertained, we will drag it out. So. I went on to say quite a bit of other stuff, and again, if you're interested in reading the entire thing, I am going to post it. Um, without editing, I, I'll correct some spelling, but other than that, I'm going to leave it exactly as it was delivered at the debate. Not only did he say that the sun was electric, which can easily be disproved by the fact that an electric light would give off a very different spectrum than nuclear fission. The seasons were explained by the sun coming closer and going further away from the earth. And when I pointed out that when the sun goes down on a flat earth, the whole thing would be dark, he responded that the sun doesn't ever totally set, which means that the same mechanism that causes the night and day is responsible for the seasons, which would also, if you're using any kind of logic at all, imply that it would be winter wherever it was night and summer wherever it was light. Not to mention that if the sun went down low enough on a flat earth, to make it dark anywhere, even if it doesn't go all the way below the horizon, the whole thing is still going to be dark. And I'm just trying to illustrate the full insanity of the arguments that were presented. And also, after he gave this completely lunatic, logic-based explanation of night and day and the seasons and the electric sun, the audience oohed and odd and amen as if Einstein had just disclosed the theory of relativity to them for the first time. And he liked to say to me repeatedly that I was just repeating what I've heard. So I'll give you an example of absolute proof that that wasn't the case. Um, he was giving examples of how much curvature there should be in a certain distance. And I happened to know those formulas. And his numbers were wrong. So I did the math in my head backwards from his ending points. And I determined that he was using the formula for a parabolic approximation instead of the actual formula for curvature, which requires trigonometry, and I know that there's no flat earther that can do trigonometry. So when it was time for my rebuttal, I called him out on this bad math, and you should have seen his eyes. It was amazing. They bulged out of his head. Um, <laughs> but the point is, I absolutely established that I wasn't just repeating what I had you know, read or researched, because I was able actually to do these formulas in my head on the spot and call him out for using bad math. By the way, you guys, it was almost difficult to drag this out this long because in reality, the flat earth can be totally disproved with one simple fact. If the sun set on a flat planet, the whole thing would go dark at once. Period. End of story. No more discussion. But 
obviously, you know, you can't reason with someone that has totally abandoned common sense. Okay, so I want to share with you guys the uh, closing arguments because I actually do feel like this is important in any context. The Flat Earth <clears throat> is a monumental catastrophe of culture. It represents a total breakdown of our education systems, a justifiable loss of trust in our political and scientific institutions. I do not pick on flat earthers because I like to make people feel dumb. I do not care about being correct. I am after truth for the sake of curiosity and utility. The sad truth is that we have been lied to about a myriad of subjects. Our scientific institutions have been corrupted. Our political systems are frauds cavorting crazily all over the globe, hemming us in. The situation is similar to the effects of a lying, unfaithful lover on their partner. The person thus betrayed no longer believes anything their partner says and eventually becomes so paranoid that they are seeing lies and deception, even where there are none. Just yesterday I listened to a scientist ridicule people that believe there is a link between autism and vaccines, even though CDC researcher has admitted to burying evidence that supported this. So unfortunately, it is understandable that people have been pushed to the extreme represented by the Flat Earth movement. The, math, the Flat Earth is a massive distraction. As I alluded to earlier, I believe, and I am not alone in this belief, that there is a movement in consciousness happening right now. An incredible number of people are waking up, wiping the webs and the dew from their third eyes. This new consciousness expands the parameters of our experience and changes the way that we relate to the world. The universe is a conscious being, and there are reliable methods that are easily accessible to anyone that facilitate the, experience, the experiences that almost invariably lead to this state. We have compounds that have been proven to enhance neurogenesis, increase neuroplasticity, increase intelligence, and free us from traumas and addictions. We have ancient practices from many traditions that affect similar changes. We can take our evolution into our own hands and advance ourselves with astonishing rapidity. The effects of this process are truly humbling. We learn that we are truly part of an eternal, interconnected web of consciousness. This experience of gnosis inspires people to behave in a way that is symbiotic with each other and all of life. It is an organic process and not a matter of choosing a belief system and adhering to a set of rules, as is the case with religion. This movement is the greatest threat to the oppressive empires of Earth than anything has ever been in human history. If there is a conspiracy involving Flat Earth, it is the Flat Earth movement itself. It is a trap. Instead of donating money to stop deforestation, clean up the oceans, fight the human traffic industry, or any one of the other evils in the world, Many of the people that ask questions and refuse to accept the world as it is are buying expensive flat earth models, hats and t-shirts, traveling to seminars, all in the name of a totally pointless, non-actionable, imaginary cause. They have become unwitting agents of the very forces they believe they are exposing. It is a tremendous dupe. I have noticed that flat earthers, when interviewed, consistently express being outsiders, misfits, feeling like they never belonged. This movement is preying on the well-meaning but lost, misguided, naive and lonely. It gives them a sense of belonging. I hope that I've been able to reach at least one person here today that has been sucked into this movement to find something with purpose, meaning, and positive consequence to invest their time and energy into. There is so much going on on this planet that is beautiful, purposeful, and worthy of your contributions. There are many movements and communities of people that will welcome your cooperation and your being with open arms. Thank you all for coming. Now, after that closing argument, I was called a Satanist, attacked personally, and threatened along with and people that were there to support me. And in case you're wondering um, where the video is from this debate, I actually didn't take any video because we had to bring our son who's only a few months, not even a few months old, and she had to hold him the whole time. There was nowhere to, no tables or anything, just chairs, the place was already packed. And I had actually agreed not to post a video until after they had uh, finished their pay-per-view because I guess they were going to actually charge people to view it online. And they had lots of great cameras set up, so I didn't see any reason to make a video of our own because I wasn't anticipating problems and I thought I could just ask them for the video after the event. I really do hope you guys will share this video, especially, you know, I'll tag the minute markers. Um, that last little bit, I think that's definitely worth sharing with anybody that you think is even flirting with the idea of the flat earth. I'm going to get the Psychedelics Masterclass out in the next couple of days. Thank you guys so much for your patience. Please hit the like button, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.